Hey gang, how are we doing? Ah, it's been it's been a wild and crazy day so far. So we're gonna settle down and enjoy this continuation that we're doing. Continuing our our um Hey Nina. Hey Seth, how you doing? You guys? Glad to have you aboard again. Uh, what we're doing is we're doing a series that are talking about songwriting basics. Um, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm giving you all the tools that songwriters have, all the parameters that songs can be, right? So these are all the different ways that I'm going to give you that songs can possibly go. So you have all these different choices, and uh, you can go through these uh, this series of uh, uh, lectures and uh, and kind of get a, a a wrap up of what 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 songwriting is about. All the different um, ways that you can go in this in this wacky world of songwriting. And then that gives you more options, you know, more tools that you, more tools that you have, the more options you can uh, do, and the uh, the better chance that your song will uh, uh, will be a success uh, to your listeners. You know, we talk about the rising. Uh, we talk about <clears throat> uh, the um, the arc of interest, right? Rising, 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 rising. We want to start our song getting people interested in the first couple of lines and in the first couple of notes and chords. And then we want to maintain their interest with how? With, of course, lyric, but also rhyme scheme, line rhythm, melody, chords, how the how the how the story develops and textures right and we do that we do all that we keep that interest going th with all those things and we apply to those things we apply original detail contrast and what rep a rep, a rep, a rep, a rep, a rep, a repetition, right? So, those three things. Uh, we talk about um, setting up expectations. The minute you start a song, you set up expectations. And you either A, deliver what they want to hear, or B, give them a, what I like to call, a happy surprise. Like, ooh, ah, yeah. See, that's a happy surprise. We don't want, what, huh, yeah. No, we don't want that. Okay, so here we are on our quest for learning all the tools that we have. Now, we left off with, um, we went over titles. We went over title placement, the different th things like that. We went over the title test. Now... I think before we go any further, um, we might want to talk about, um, I was going to talk about rhyme and rhythm, but maybe we should go forward with, um, hold on, let me just, I'm looking at my notes here. The because um, we talked about the ten elements, and uh, so we talked about the ten. We started with one, which is concept. Two is genre. Three is uh, the, the lyric elements, right? And so uh, let's go ahead with the with the lyric elements. Let's do that, and then we'll go back to rhyme and rhythm later, because that is a more a little bit more of a complicated thing. Um, 
uh, let's just stay with the basics for a while. So um, let's talk about um, the lyric elements. So uh, the elements of lyric are as follows. The first uh, um, element is physical writing. So writing in the real world, right? Uh, real places, real events, uh, actions, descriptions, and conversations, okay? That's the real world. And then we also have the world of emotions in, in the lyric world, emotions. We also have symbolic writing, which is three. And then we have also conclusive writing, which is four, right? So let's start our basic, uh, uh, our lyric basics with physical writing, all right? Okay, now, with physical writing, a, a way that I have to remember the elements of physical writing is the story pivots around these physical elements. The lyric or and the story pivots, P-I-V-O-T-S. The physical world pivots on these things, all right? So let's talk about pivots, P-I-V-O-T-S. Pivot is the important word, right? So what we have in this little code to remember, pivots, let's start with a P. P is person, right? First, second, or third person. P, pivot. Second is information. And that is in the real physical world. Information meaning descriptions, actions, and conversation, right? Those three things. And we're going to get a little bit more into it. Um, and then um, that's P-I. V is the voice. Either you're talking live to someone or you're thinking. And the, those two voices are, are different. And so we want, to, we want to maintain a consistent voice in our song whether we're talking directly to the audience or directly to a character, right? Or whether we're thinking. So we'll talk about that. That's, that's V, voice. Uh, P-I-V-O is occasion. So that means the setting, right? Occasion. What occasion is it? Or occasions, right? So that's the setting, right? Um, and T, very important, time. We're still in the physical element, so of course time is part of the physical world, right? And as you're going to see, a very important one. And then last but very important is S, which is the senses, right? So those are all the elements of the real, actual real world of writing, the, the world of reality, of um, of real. Okay, so let's go back. Now let's start with P, and, the, and we're going to show you some very clever and cool things about P, all right? P is person. So what do we have? We've got three things, right? First person, second person, and third person. Me or I, you, and he or she, right? And then we've got the plural of that, we, y'all, and in the South we say all y'all, and them, okay? Now, there is a lot of, a lot of power manipulating going on in these three things that I'm going to explain to you right now that this is going to blow your mind. All right. Okay. So let's start with me. First person. All right. A lot of songs, the singer is speaking to the audience about himself. So a lot of songs are, are about I or me or mine. Right. A lot of songs do that. And I will also add that many songs also have me and you in them, right? And we'll cover that in a minute. In a minute, we'll cover me and you. But most songs, especially in the pop world, most songs are me and you songs. Now, 
What is the what is the reason? Why aren't most songs he and she? Because that's the third person. Uh, why is it? Why are most songs me? Well, the reason for that is simple, and uh, kind of obvious, and that is the first person is the most intimate. So if I'm singing about me, I'm actually singing about everyone in the audience. I woke up this morning feeling kind of dusty and sad. Right away, the audience is going, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel that, I feel, I've had those moments, right? And so it's, a, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's the most personal connecting we can get. And it's also, it also creates um, the, 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 the eye has so much loaded with it. It's got, first of all, um, well, it's intimate. It's the most intimate. Next, and it forces the listener to be in the song with the singer, right? So it, it, we want to make sure that when we sing, me, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm thinking this, I'm talking this. You want to make sure that your listeners agree and are on the same page as you are because you're, you're kind of forcing the listener to be actually in the song, right? Yes, that's the first thing. The second thing is um, when you're singing me, I, um, you can be, and I love this about songwriting, you can be anything you want to be, all right? Um, to give you an example, um, like, a, like let's, let's say, let's get my favorite capo here. This is my, my gibbo, my trusty gibbo, cutaway J45, which I love. I'm going to take my three-string capo. It's a little tiny capo, right? And it goes right on here. It goes on those three strings, and it makes a dad gad. So I don't have to change the tuning. I can play it just like I would normally play. But that's a whole other lesson. So let's talk about, um, I'm the rock, the Columbus song, when he first saw land, been here for 10 billion years, now I'm sitting in the sand, people think I'm beginning. Waiting for the country to begin. So I set up. I can be anything. I was. I, I'm saying that I'm Plymouth Rock. So I, I have to tell people right away, right at the beginning of the song, what I am. Um, I have a song, uh, and I've used this before, but I have a song that um, that I that I wrote with uh, uh, Sally Barris, and it goes. Uh, I'm an old maid taking orders and keeping quarters till my shift is through. You know, you got my drift. So I can be an old maid taking orders, keeping quarters till my shift is through. You see how that works? So um, I can be anything I want to be. I just have to let people know ahead of time you know, right at the beginning of this song, um, what or who I am. So I can be a rock. I can be Plymouth Rock. I can be a tree. I can be a. I can be a, a, an old woman. I can be whatever I want. So the I 
has a lot of potential, right? So, and, and the, other, this, the other thing cool about that is, is, you know, I can write about anybody or anything that comes to my mind, literally. Uh, there's just no, you know, I can be this, this little pocket knife that I, that, I, that I keep handy to open letters and stuff. I can be the pocket knife that Daniel Boone carried through the wilderness, right? Uh, if I found enough interest in a story in that. So I has a lot of power, right? Uh, also, um, uh, I is connected to um, either, now when I bring another character in, it can be either me and you or me and he or she, right? Okay, so let's talk about those two things. Let's move to, let's move to you, because now we're going to go me and you. You has a very interesting uh, deal about it, and that is you has, has two powers. It has the collective power, like y'all, and it also has you singular, but it's also got a, a little tricky one, which is the singular collective or the collective singular you, which is you get to that kind of you by saying to yourself, not necessarily as a lyric, but you, you say to yourself, you know when you want to go out on a Saturday night to be wild and crazy, but you can't because you just broke up with your girl? You see how I'm talking to one person, the one you, but I'm talking to a bunch of singular people, right? I'm not talking to a crowd of people. I'm talking to one person, but it's a vague, generic, single person, right? So that's a very cool, very cool uh, thing to set up. And also, another thing about the singular you uh, the, especially the singular collective you, is it's a sneaky way to talk about yourself without being, without hurting yourself. So I can say, you know when you broke someone's heart and you feel real bad and you wish you could crawl in a hole, right? So you see, that's really maybe what happened to you meaning me but you don't want to you don't want to reveal that right you don't want to you don't want to tell the audience well you know I, I, i'm i'm kind of a uh, i was kind of a bad character here uh so you you can write the song in the in the collective singular you right uh, so that's uh there's a great uh eagle song called um you're not drinking enough, and that's that's about that's exactly what that song's about. Is is uh you're trying to get over this girl, you know, you did her wrong, and uh, no matter what you do, you can't forget her, and it and then it says you must not be drinking enough. Uh, so that's a sneaky way of getting the audience to uh, um, to learn about stuff that happened to you that wasn't necessarily terrific. But you don't want to, you don't want the, you know, you don't want the, to be pointing to you. So you, you talk about, you know, when you, you know, when you screwed up and, you know, your girlfriend, you know, just left you and you realize it's all your fault. See how, how, how work that works. You know, I realized that I screwed up and everything was all my fault. You, you, you see the difference there? There's a big difference between those two things. Yeah, yeah. So that's that collective singular is a really cool thing. Another another Eagle song that does that is New Kid in Town. Everybody's talking about the new kid in town, and then in the in the uh, you know as the song progresses, uh, it it ends up. Uh, you know he's the new kid for a while, and then somebody else comes along, and now they're the new kid, and you're no longer the new kid, and so. It's it's a way of talking about this without saying sing without saying me. I'm the new kid in town. See how that sounds kind of weird. I know I'm the new kid in town, and I'm so cool now. I'm cool, and uh oh, now I'm not. You know, 
Much better to go, you're the new kid in town. Look at how everybody loves you. You're the new kid in town. Oh, but soon people get tired of you, and now there's another new kid in town. You see how that works so much better? <clears throat> because you is also intimate. Me and you are both intimate. Uh, me is the most intimate. You is still pretty intimate, though. Uh, when we talk about um, me and you, all right, let's talk about that. When we talk about me and you, that is the most intimate of the pairing. You know, when you have two people, me and you is the most intimate. Uh, and so uh, that's just good to know. Uh, but there are certain restrictions to, to me and you, um, depending on the voice. Uh, and we'll get, we'll, get that, we'll get to that in a minute. Because we talked about the um, the P I V and the V is voice, and we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, now, so me and you, most songs are that way because because it's so intimate. Now, uh, the third way that you can go is y'all. Now, you meaning you people, you know, like you're 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 talking to the audience in general. That has some caveats also. When you're giving the audience good news, everything's fine. But when you start judging the audience, when you're going to give them a lesson that they may not find easy to swallow, that is very tricky, very tricky. That's when we're standing on our soapbox and we're saying, hey, y'all better not go to war because war is a mess, you know. Uh, when you tell the audience something like a lesson uh, or a little preachy kind of thing, a little preach deal, it's, it's um, people don't want to hear that. People get, they get defensive, right? So is there a way that we can get around being defensive? Yes, there is. There is a way to do that. And uh, we will talk about that in a minute. Let me make sure I'm going to write that down. We want to make sure we cover that. Um, preach. All right. We're going to talk about that in a minute. How do you preach and get away with it? All right. There are, there are ways to do that. But let's cover everybody. Let's cover everybody first. So we have me and you, or just you. You can sing like, you can do a singular you like, hey, Johnny, don't you take your gun to town. Or is it Bill? Don't take your gun to town, Bill. Leave your gun at home, Bill. Don't take your gun to town. That's a Johnny Cash song. And he's talking to one, one person, right? Uh, and then you can say, you're the new kid in town. That's the collective singular. And then... Yeah, like a Dylan song, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. He, he's talking to everybody, general everybody, right? Also, all you need is love. All you need is love. All you need is love, love. Love is all you need. That's, again, very general. Everybody, everybody that's listening, all right? Now, we get to he and she. Um... Uh, he and she has a very special quality, okay? Very special quality. And the quality is this. If I say, I'm going to go rob a bank. I'm sitting in my car. And I've got my gun here, riding shotgun. And I'm looking to see if anybody's around, right? Now, that has a certain energy to it, doesn't it? And it's making me look like what, what they call the untrustworthy narrator, which uh, Steely Dan does that a lot in, in, his, in, their, in their lyrics, where they're kind of sleazy people. Um, the other one is Randy Newman uh, has done that uh, in the past uh, about, you know, we're just rednecks, we're rednecks. Uh, and, uh, and so forth. 
Um, so untrustworthy narrator. But uh, because, like, let's let's take something even more serious. Let's say somebody is is abusing their wife. Oh, and see, that's really, that's very very negative, you know. And that's something that we don't ever want to be associated with. So how can we can we write a song like that? Can we or should we just avoid it? No. We don't have to avoid it. We can write it in the third person. Okay? Third person. She went into her room crying with a scar on her face. She just got through with another argument with her husband, right? So we know, oh my gosh. Yeah, oh, somebody says, uh, do I post stuff like this on YouTube? And the answer is yes, I do. Uh, through creativevets.org. The Creative Vets has a channel. And uh, everything I'm saying right now will immediately go to YouTube. All right? So I hope that answered your question. Uh, I see. I see. I see. Oh, I see you. I see you. That's cute. I see you. <laughs> so, um, so he and she has this wonderful ability to put up an invisible wall, right? Between the singer and the characters in the song. So that can be really, really helpful, right? If I'm going to be um, someone who's going to go poison, let's say I'm, I'm working for Vladimir Putin and I'm going to go poison one of his opponents, you know, I can do that. He did this. He, you know, he checked his watch. He had, he had the poison in his pocket. He knew that, uh, that that person was going to show up at the cafe and blah, blah, blah. And you can create a story, you know, of, of high intrigue and uh, where things are really going to go foul, right? He and she. So he and she creates a wonderful wall and protects the singer, right? Protects the singer. So I can now write about any topic I want to write about. And if it's uncomfortable for me to be that person, it's easy. Just put it in the he and she, right? Even if it's something that I did, I can put it in that he and she, which is farther disconnected than you. I could say, you know when you did this very uncomfortable thing? Well, that's one removed from me. But if I say, I say, you know when he does this, you feel how much more removed that is? So he or she, or both, uh, or they, you can see how far removed that is, right? So he and she has this wonderful ability to remove the singer from the story. And you become the omnipotent um, narrator, okay? Now, another magical thing about the omnipotent narrator. Get ready. Wait for it. You can actually read the minds of every single character when you're talking he and she. Cool, huh? You can actually read the minds of these people. So you can say, he's thinking to himself, she's pretty cute. I better not blow this. Meanwhile, she's thinking, he's not my type. I hope he doesn't say, let's get together. See what I mean? I can, I can get inside their minds, and everybody's totally cool with that. But now watch this. If it's me and her, or me and you, I cannot read your mind. I can't read her mind if I'm, if, if me is in the song, if I am in the song. So I'm thinking to myself, I sure would like to get to know her. I hope I don't blow it. She's fiddling with her glass. And she's, and she's kind of looking away. See, I can tell you what I see, and I can imagine what she's thinking. 
I'll bet she's thinking blah, 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 but I can't actually know what she's thinking. Whereas he and she, the minute you have all the characters in the third person, if you have them all in the third person, then you can read everybody's minds. And that's a very powerful thing, right? Very powerful thing. Okay, now, let's go back, let's rewind, and, and let's talk about the difference between me and you and me and she. So me and you is intimate, right? Now, when I'm talking, now we're getting to the voice part, right? The voices, the P-I-V, V voice. When you're in the voice of conversation, when you're live talking to somebody, you have to make sure that you're talking spontaneously, that you don't get poetic. You can't go crazy, flowery, waxing poetic when you're talking directly to someone else and they're talking directly to you, right? You can't do that. So that's, that's, the, that's the warning about the voices. Uh, when you're thinking to someone, now you can be thinking like, you know, and usually when you're thinking to someone, you let them know early in the song that you're thinking, you're not actually talking, right? You're not actually having a conversation. Um, so if you say like the song, the Eagle song, look at us, baby, up all night, tearing our love apart. Aren't we the same two people who live through years in the dark? Now that is fairly poetic. So I know that the singer is thinking to the partner. And we don't know what the partner's doing. The partner could be sleeping and he's looking at her while she sleeps. Or she could be literally, you know, um, somewhere crying, you know, or, or uh, you know, she's gone off to the next room. And, uh, uh, but we know that they're not talking directly. Now, because they're not talking directly, because he's thinking, now we can get poetic. See, listen to this poetry. poetry. Look at us, baby, up all night, tearing our love apart. Aren't we the same two people who live through years in the dark? That aren't we the same two people who live through years in the dark? That's that's a beautiful poetic line with a lot of imagery, and um, and um, sim symbolism, sy symbolic writing, right? Figurative writing. So that's something that you wouldn't say live to somebody. It would be really clumsy for me to say, "Hey, hey, Alice, you know." Uh, Look at us, baby, up all night, tearing our love apart. Aren't we the same two people who lived through years in the dark? The, 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 the girl's going, what, what are you, why, you're, you're, you're suddenly just getting all poetic and stuff. What, what is it? See, it sounds a little awkward. So when you open a song by saying that poetic line, it gives you permission because we now know that they aren't talking directly to each other. He's thinking to her, right? And so now we have permission to have this wonderful um, um, poetic conversation. So you can be thinking. And once we're in that thinking mode, you pretty much stay in it, right? Like another one is Desperado. Desperado, why don't you come to your senses? You've been out riding fences for so long. You're a hard one. See what I mean? You got, you know, and this is, don't you take the queen of diamonds. She'll beat you if she's able. The queen of hearts is always your best bet. You see how that's so symbolic? So we know that he's not talking, or she's not, he's not talking directly to this guy, right? He's going to give this guy advice. But he can be very poetic about it. But when you open a song with a live conversation, like, you know, you know, you and me, we've been friends for a long while. And uh, when you drove up right now, something was, I was thinking to myself, weren't we planning 
to tell our parents that we're going to get married? You see how that's very live conversation? So you know that I'm speaking live to this person. Now, now once, I st once I'm live, it's very difficult for me to, to, to go. And the cool auburn brown whiff of your hair floating through the breeze like an autumn sky. You see how that sounds suddenly like, whoa, where are you going with this? So it's, it's, if you want to call this voices like some sort of poetic level, right? When you're speaking live to someone, it has to sound spontaneous, like something you're saying right at the moment. So it wants to be simple syntax. You don't want to reverse syntax, like, to the bar we will go. Well, unless you're Irish. Then you can say, well, to the bar we will go, yeah. Okay, then we're going to drink and then we're going to kill somebody and dismember them. And then we're going to have more beer. Yeah. That's, those are Irish folk songs. I don't know why, but they're always killing and dismembering people and then getting drunk. It was a pretty rough time in Ireland back in the day, huh? At any rate, uh, and I can say that because I'm part Irish, as you can see. Uh, okay, so, um, yeah. So, when you're speaking, when you, when you start off a song speaking live to someone, it's a good idea to stay that way. Uh, if you start off the song poetically, then that gives us permission to speak any way we want. We can now, when we open a song with a poetic um, statement to someone, okay, you're thinking. But you can also think in a very, in a very non-poetic way. But nonetheless, you've opened the door to, I know you're thinking. I know you're not actually talking to he or she, him or her. So it's okay. You can, you can, you can use poetic language if you want. You don't always have to, but you have that permission. And that's only because we opened the song that way, right? We opened the song uh, letting the audience know that we're thinking and not, and not talking live, right? So that's the, that's the wonderful thing about voicing, how you're going to voice the song, whether vo you voice in the moment live or composed, I'm thinking this thing, right? So... Just keep that in mind that when you decide to um, speak live to an audience, be careful about breaking into poetic language too much to where it sounds awkward and weird. Stay in a very conversational mode, right? A conversational level uh, rather than in a, in a more poetic level. Okay. All right. Uh, I want to see if we covered... Oh. Okay, so me and you. Now, let's talk about me and her, right? Me and her has several different interesting aspects to it. When I say me and her, I can now... Well, first of all, the minute I t let you know it's me and her, we're not speaking live anymore, right? Because I wouldn't say her, um, glad to have her here. I like the way her new glasses look. See that? Doesn't that? I said, glad to have you here. I love the way your new glasses look. You see, now that's, that's in the moment. But if I go me and she, right away, it's composed. It's not, it's not live. So me and her, or me and he, give me permission right away to be a little more poetic, right? I can, I can say things poetically about that person. Like when I'm, when I'm all in a thunderstorm, she's my light of day. She's my sun above the clouds, right? You see how that, she's, she's this, she's that. But if I say, you know, when I'm having a thunder cloud, you're my, you're my sun above the clouds. You're my ray. It's, it's a little bit more, hmm, it has just a different feel to it. It's not as, it's not as believable as it is, she's my this, she's my that. 
you're complimenting this person over here to the audience. And it sounds more relaxed and, and real, right? Then if I get, suddenly get real poetic talking live to someone, it, it sounds kind of forced, doesn't it? Well, you know. So it's cool to know that if you want to talk really nice about somebody and get real poetic, it's a nice idea to go she. I'm her this and that, and she's my this and that. See, it's very cool. So me and she, we can get poetic about the person. That we, we, we can say things to her. Also, we can say things to her that we wouldn't say live. Like, you know, I always thought she was a bitch, you know. Can I say that on live TV? Anyway, you know what I'm saying? Like, notice the difference. I always thought you were a bitch. Ugh! See how powerfully, wow, you know, that really makes me look bad, right? But if I say, you know, I always thought she was a bitch, it has a different vibe to it. It's, it's, it's kind of humorous in a way. It's like, oh, yeah, bitch, right? <laughs> yeah. But so there's, there's a big difference there. So I can say things about, I can also say, you know, wonderful things too, you know. She's my circle of life. She's my joy in the moment. She's my whisper of wind in a hot, sultry day. You know, you can say, you can say things to her about her, right? So you're getting that vibe? Okay, so you can be poetic when you can't with me and you. There's one other thing. When I talk about me and she, if it's a negative thing like we're breaking up, we can focus on me. And again, we can talk about her and we can say things about her that we wouldn't like. She was, I, I always thought she was a bitch, you know. That is, so that's something we could say. But notice that I say, you know, I'm going to go out tonight and I'm going to drink myself to sleep. Because, you know, she never did like me anyway. And so I'm going to go do this and I'm going to do that. You see how I've distanced? Like she's just kind of, you know, she's just kind of off in the distance there. So that's another powerful thing about me and her is that I can kind of dismiss her. And let's talk about me, you know, when you're, when you're going through a breakup kind of thing, you know. Uh, so there's that power rather than me and you, you know, I just broke up with you. I'm going to go out and I'm going to do these things. I always thought you were, you know, you were a no good uh, son of a gun. So you can see how much more personal that is. And so, yes, you can do that, but it's a little bit more risky to do, you know, that kind of thing uh, when you're going through a breakup or something and you want to focus on, on your pain. It'll be much more effective to do me and her because then you can dismiss her and move on, right? When you get you, when it's me and you in the song, you can't put, watch this, you can't put me and you in the first verse and then drop you throughout the rest of the song. The audience is going, wait a minute, what about, you know, you're talking to this person. You said you, so she's very close to you. And you're just, you're, you're not mentioning her anymore. See, it, it, it doesn't work. But if you say at the, in the first verse, you know, she left me this morning about 5.30 a.m. Now I'm going out day drinking, and I don't know when I'm coming back. See how now I can go, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm, 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 I'm all the way to the end, right? But you couldn't do that if it was me and you, you know? You left me about 5.30 a.m. Now I'm going to go do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this and this and this. The audience is wondering, yeah, but what about her? What about her? Aren't you going to bring her back into the song? Well, you eliminate that slight question, even if it's a minor one. It still is, it still is a possibility to be a question. So, you can eliminate that by by going me and her, right? Okay. So those are all the different aspects of first person, second person, and third person, right? So you can see there's there's a lot of of uh, difference 
between some of these things, isn't there? Maybe you didn't realize that before, but now you realize you've got the power now to make decisions. When you start a song, you can start it me and you. But, and I'll tell you this, this happens quite often. Professional songwriters are always experimenting. Like they get through a song, halfway through a song of me and you, and they'll just try, I wonder what it would be like if I went me and her, if that would change the vibration of the song. And then I could talk, I could be more poetic about her, I could say uh, nastier things about her and not get in trouble, blah, 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 you know, might try things. So that's something that you all can do as well. And the other thing is maybe I started with me and you, and I went, maybe it should be him and her. Let's try that. He said this, she said this. And you remove yourself and become the omnipotent observer. Because maybe I actually, maybe I do want to th be inside the girl's head and the guy's head. Now we can do that. We know how to do that. We, do, we just do him and her, right? But we can't do me and her. It won't work. We can't get into her head. And we can't definitely can't do me and you. There's no way I know what, what those two different ways are. I can't tell what she's thinking. I can guess what they're thinking by their actions. I can guess it, but I can't be sure, right? The only time I can be sure in that case is if I'm trying to make a point. Like, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking you love me. You're thinking you miss me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Actually, the audience knows you can't really know what you, what you are thinking, but we get the point. You're trying to make this grand statement, right? You're, yeah, so that uh, the irony that oh yeah, I can't, I I can't actually think, but oh yeah, I know what you're thinking. That in other words, I know you well enough. So yes, you can say you know what they're thinking. But the audience will get the will get the the joke. That you can't really know. But you're saying to the audience, oh, you know her well enough to where you're just gonna go ahead and say, you know what you, I know what you're thinking. See what I mean? So you can use that to your advantage, but really we know that you can't, right? Okay, so that's that's the three characters. Now let's talk about preaching. Remember we talked about uh, a little while ago, about 10 minutes ago, about, um, let's just face it, look, let's, let's just, let's, can we get here in a moment of real here? What are we as songwriters, really? What we are is, we're little churches preaching our little sermons, our little songs, in hopes that many people will listen and learn a little something, you know, learn a little something about love, learn a little something about jealousy or forgiveness or whatever the emotional message is in your song. We're always preaching, preaching. And of course, I personally would love to heal the world and have all the children in the world sing in harmony, right? That'd be great. Uh, so we're all little churches of ourselves, churches of me, churches of you, preaching our little, our little gospel. Now, we want our sermon to be effective. So let's talk about the most effective ways we can do this, right? The most, of, well, let's first of all talk about the least effective way. And we've talked about this before. If you're going to say something to the audience that's a little bit hard to swallow, but the audience knows that what you're saying is true, but they don't like it, that kind of preaching is the most difficult. So how can we pull that off? How can we give them a dose of something they don't want to hear, but they know is real? Okay, the least effective way is to go, you all need to put down your guns and stop going to war, all right? That's a painful thing for people to hear. And what they're doing is, I'm not putting down my guns, I'm gonna go buy another one. 
just because you said that. You know what I mean? I mean, people get defensive. And that's a natural reaction. There's nothing wrong with that. So how can we tell people, put down your guns and don't go to war? war? Hey, Robert. Good to see you, bro. <clears throat> um, so there are ways to do this. We'll talk about uh, putting down your gun and not going to war. Okay? All right, so how can we do this? Let's look at all the different ways. The first way is the me message. I'm going to put down my gun, and I'm not going to go to war. Oh, okay, that didn't hurt anybody. Notice I'm not pointing the finger at everybody out there. I'm just saying me. I'm not going to do it. And so I'm using that as what we call the me message, right? So I get, so the audience gets, oh, okay, you're not going to do this. And why are you not going to do this? And of course, I explain in the song why I've decided not to do this. And I put my case out there, right? Okay, that's, that's one way, the me message. The second way, pretty obvious, is he and she. He's putting down his gun. He's not going to go to war, right? Yeah, that, that'll work. Again, not pointing the finger out there at all you people, right? So that'll work. Another way is the singular you. Billy, notice I'm, you know, hey, Billy, put down your gun. Don't go to war, and this is why. So that's the singular you. That'll also work. Right? Yes. We've, we've, we've avoided the plural you, right? Now, and again, if you want to go into the singular collective, you could say, you know when you th realize that war is such a waste of energy and time, and you know when you decide to put down your gun, notice how I'm talking to one generic person. I'm only talking to one you, but you get the feeling that, well, it's kind of all of us, but not really. So that's another way. Another way is we. We're going to put down our guns. We're not going to go to war. We. So I'm including myself in this. You know, John um, Mayer has, you know, we're waiting for, we're waiting for, uh, we're waiting for the, the, the change, we're waiting for times to change what is it uh, what's that song that he did on on uh, continuum uh, we're waiting for we're waiting for something to change we're waiting for time to we're waiting for we're waiting for change anyway you got the idea waiting for the world to change yeah thanks thanks yeah it's a great song waiting for the world to change so we he includes himself. So you suddenly, you're no longer a preacher up here preaching down to the little people. You're down here. You're one of the congregation saying, we, we need to put, a, put away our guns. Don't you agree? Isn't that a good idea? And let's, let's all of us stop going to war. You see how that softens the blow? So those are all ways techniques you can use to preach from our little church of me and get the message across with the least amount of pain to the listener. Okay? Again, when we have something wonderful to say to them, that's no problem. Bob Dylan also had another technique, and that is he could say, you know, about that, about about putting away guns and not going to war? I don't know. The answer's somewhere out there in the wind. I don't have the answer. I just thought maybe that's a good idea. The answer is somewhere else. You see how, like the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Notice how he diffused the finger pointing, right? By saying, I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm just a guy. I don't know. I notice these things that maybe, you know, I notice everybody's got a gun. Everybody's going to war. When will we stop doing this? I don't know. The answer's blowing in the wind. I don't know. Right? Very clever, that guy. Very, very clever. Okay. So that is 
That is the um, character, different persons. Now, let's get into information, all right? Remember P-I? The I stands for information. Now, the information in the real world, remember, the story in the real world pivots around these elements. So this is all about the real world. We're not into the world of emotions yet. So what do we have? What information do we have in the real world? We have three things. We have descriptions, we have actions, and we have conversations, all right? So these are three things we think about when we're writing. We can ask ourselves, am I giving enough descriptions? Am I giving enough actions? Could I have a conversation somewhere? Because people have conversations in the real world, right? So it's just a nice little barometer. Let's see, P-I-V, the I is information. Information is descriptions, actions, and conversations. DAC, D-A-C. Descriptions, actions, conversations. Now, let me just point out something. Conversations. A very clever little thing conversations are because conversations, we are talking about the real world right now, the world, the physical world, but conversations, which ha actually happen in the real world, right? They can cross over into the emotional world because I can say, you said you would always love me. See how I crossed into the world of emotion? You said you were jealous. You say you're jealous. So you can talk about emotions. So that's a way to get the emotional world in a song without actually saying emotions, without saying, I feel jealous. You can say, Did, weren't, weren't you the one that said you were jealous? See how the, see the difference there? It suddenly becomes something real in the real world because you actually said it. <clears throat> the other thing about conversations is you can cross over into the emotional world if you're, th if you're having an inner conversation, right? So make sure we dis determine the difference between a live conversation and an inner conversation. Inner conversations can be very poetic because you're thinking, right? So inner conversations fall under the category of emotions, right? Although you can think real thoughts in the real world, you can think, gee, I forgot my wallet. Or you can think, wow, I didn't realize how jealous I was of Larry, right? And you can think, she's about to break my heart. I can feel it coming, right? So you can, when you're thinking inner conversations, you can think in the real world or you can think in the emotional world, right? So you can do both. So conversations have this wonderful ability to link the real world with the emotional world without necessarily falling out of the real story. Like if you're writing a story song, and we'll get into that later, in, in, uh, in song development, we get into stories versus emotion, emotionally driven songs. But, um, okay, so, um, information. Okay, that's good. So now we know we've got descriptions. And descriptions, you know, are so vast. We can describe ourselves. We can describe all the things that we have, our bling, our, you know, our accoutrement. We can describe our cars, our clothes, our boots. Uh, we, can we can describe, you know, um, our, our hobbies, our jobs. We can describe other people and their bling. Descriptions are vast, right? And actions are very cool. You can do this, do that, you know. You can wish you were doing this, wish you were doing that. You know, uh, so there's all kinds of actions you can either do or think you're going to do or that you already did.
And now we're getting to a very important one. Um, P-I-V-O. O is occasion, the setting, right? Now, there's four different ways we can, we can deal with settings. We can have a single setting that takes place, the whole song takes place in one setting. We can have a song that takes place in several settings. We can have a song that takes place traveling to where the setting changes constantly as the song's like six days on the road. That song is constantly changing and we get the feeling that it's changing as the song is being played. And the last one is no setting. You don't have to have a setting in a song, right? You don't have to have a setting. But usually in a real song that's story driven, you have settings, right? Because if you don't have a setting, that means you're thinking, right? And thinking is, a, is emotional, or it can be, right? It can be emotional. So normally we're going to have one setting, several settings, or traveling. Those are the three settings we have, right? So pivot, P-I-V-O-T. You get to T. Now, T is super duper important because T stands for time. Now, let me just tell you, time is one of the secret power drinks of songwriting, successful songwriting. Time can do so much to either extend or improve your lyrics than almost any other trick. Also, the next one is senses. That's also one that can, can extend and, and improve your lyric. But time, for songwriters, we're all trying to do, we're trying to sell one emotional message per song. Is that right? It's the rule of one. We got one emotional message. Well, Let's take that emotional message and let's apply time to it. So let's call our song, whatever song we're writing, let's give it an emotional history. Oh, yeah. Okay, emotional history. What do I mean? Okay. The song, let's say we're breaking up with somebody. The breakup, let's put it in the middle right? There's the breakup, right? That's right. You want to make, uh, 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 Robert's saying you want to make it very clear. It's very, that's, that's absolutely right. Well, I mean, sometimes you want it to be vague. Again, that's, that's, that's up to your creative moment. And how vague you make it is really, it's a matter of PI levels, your professional intuition, how much you can get away with is a question of, you know, it's, it's up for debate. But to get back to this, um, time, emotional, we're going to do what we call an emotional history. So let's say we're breaking up with someone and we're putting that in the middle here. All right, there's the breakup. What happened just before the breakup? Let's even say, see, this is what songwriters can do because they're, because they're so tuned in to this emotion. We have the present moment and we have all of the past, right? And we have all of the future, but we know how to break it down. We can break it down. What was it like five minutes ago? Was that just before the breakup, just before you told me? What was it like an hour ago? What was it like yesterday? What, it was, it, what was it like two weeks ago? What was it like a year ago? What was it like when I was a little boy and my mother was giving me advice about love? We know to tap all those rich gold mines of information having to do with 
this breakup, right? That's the emotional history of this breakup. So anything that pertains to this love that we had between this boy and a girl, and it could be between, obviously, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> so whatever information we can mine that ties into this love that just broke up. We can use this in the song. All this rich past tense from starting from a minute ago, five minutes ago, an hour ago. We know to look at all those places for little jewels that might increase the power and the length of our song. So, you know, when we get that second ver verse-itis, and we all get that, don't we? <clears throat> yes, we can go into the backstory. We can go into five minutes ago, I thought our love was this and that and the other thing. And so we get the shock of, whoa, how things can change in such a short amount of time, right? Whoa. And that shock helps keep that, that arc of interest, keep it rising, right? When things start to level off, Bring in your time trick. What was it like yesterday? What, the, let's talk about that backstory, backstory, backstory. All right? But there's another way we can go also, and that is, what will the future be? Like, again, let's break it down like a songwriter does. What will I be like five minutes from now? <clears throat> what will it be like ten minutes what will it be like when I wake up next mor tomorrow morning? <clears throat> what will it be like at midnight or one in the morning when I can't sleep? Keep Take it all the way out. What will it be like on my deathbed? Will I still be regretting this thing that I did, the cause of this breakup, right? And again, the cause of the breakup is part of the backstory, right? So this is what I call the emotional history. All this stuff in there. You know, rich, rich gold mines of time. The rich gold mines of time, right? Tap all of that if you need to, right? Really good to know, isn't it, that we've got this rich thing to do. So time, the element of time. And also, if, we're, if the song is a traveling song, we have that, you know, like we start here and we're going, we're going. I look out the window of the train and I see this and I see this. We're going through Albuquerque. So, you know, that's, you know, that's a much more obvious thing. We're, we're traveling through, through time. But you can also, as you're traveling, as you're traveling, you can think back before this trip took place. And you can think about when this trip is over, what will it be like? What, how do you imagine the future when this, you know, six days on the road, I'm going to make it home tonight. He could have said, before I got on this train, I didn't realize how much I missed you. That could be a great bridge. Oh, and when I get off this train, I'm going to hug you like there's no tomorrow. You see, six days on the road or train or car or whatever. <clears throat> so you can so you can see how rich the time element is in in expanding your song and also giving it more depth. Right? Much more possibility of depth. Okay. So time. P I V O T S. This is our last topic of the day and we're going to wrap this up. S is the senses, right? When we write, we think about visuals. That's the first thing we think about, you know, what they look like the, and their descriptions, right? And that's normal. But let us never forget about the other four senses. And then the, finally, the sixth sense. So let's go through all the senses. We have, we have seen, obviously. But don't forget about, we can hear stuff, we can smell, we can taste things, and we can touch things, right? We don't want to forget these things. So as we're developing our story and the arc is starting to slow down, go into your senses. Think about, oh wait, 
I could smell Mama's biscuits in the oven. Now the interest level continues to rise, doesn't it? Because that wonderful, unique detail that you forgot about, but now you created because you remembered to check your senses. And let's talk a little bit about the sixth sense. That's always a good one to remember. And that is your statement of being. How do you feel? Like I'm hungry, I'm sleepy, I'm thirsty, right? These are your state of being. You can even get into emotional stuff like, I feel jealous, I feel powerful, I feel abandoned. And these are crossovers, aren't they? They're real feelings that you're having in the real world, but they're crossing into the emotions. But still, it's nice to know. What is your attitude? We're going to find out that attitudes are so important that they're actually a separate development technique, is getting an attitude, right? Yeah. So that's my final statement for your, my, you know, the physical world pivots around these elements. P, person, first, second, and third. P, I, information. Descriptions, actions, and conversations. P I V voice. What voice are you in? Are you in a live conversational style voice in which there's not that much poetry allowed? Or are you in a thinking mode? Are you thinking to somebody or are you thinking to yourself? You know, or are you thinking just to the general audience? Now you can be more poetic, right? So, and if you're going to be poetic, it's a good idea to start your song poetically. And don't let the two overlap. Otherwise, it sounds weird if you start talking live to somebody and then break into poetry. It can sound awkward and forced. Yeah. So P-I-V, voice, O, occasion, single, plural, traveling. Right? This is in the real world. In the emotional world, we don't have to have any setting. But in the physical world, we're going to have one of these three. And last, uh, P-I-V, O occasion, T, time, emotional history, so important. All the little nooks and crannies, all the little gold mines, all the little nuggets of gold that are hiding in there that have to do with this emotion that you're selling. And last but not least, and and I really mean not least, is the six senses, right? All of them. Use all of them. Okay? So now we are done with the basic physical world. Those are our physical elements. And so I bid you adieu for today. Uh, let's see. Today is, what is today? Friday. So on Tuesday, we'll continue with the emotional world. And that's a real important one. Emotional world. Because, let's face it, so many songs, so many songs, um, especially in the pop world, so many songs rely on emotions to tell their story. So we'll talk all about emotions and cliches. We're going to deal with cliches because emotions bring on cliches, and we'll explain why that is. All right? So until, until Tuesday... Okay, I'm reading Robert. Uh, I'll, I'll check out. I'll check this Nora Jones thing out. That's great. Thank you very much. And uh, and uh, Pahu, thank you for your comments. Uh, oh, you're saying what kind of song are we writing today? Whatever song you want to write. I'm not giving lessons. I'm not giving assignments. Uh, what I'm doing is a series of basic songwriting tools. And this is going to go on for about another four or five lessons, and then we'll get into uh, we'll get into uh, breaking songs down again. But I wanted you guys to be able to have these basic tools so that when we go into our hit songs and we break them down, that we that we have a reference. And so these this is the reference. So you can always go back to these basic lessons. So this lesson should be called the basic physical elements, all right? That's what we'll call this, this 
lecture today. Excuse me. Uh, so until Tuesday, what do we say? Keep it on the double nickel. See you on the flip-flop. And adios amigos. I love you all.